own communities, many principals and educators and rabbis, and even parents sometimes, make peace with the fact that there's a certain percentage of acher, of outcasts. That's a sociological rule. And they'll always tell you before the war it was worse. You know, all the heaven will tell you before the war they know exactly the Cheshbonus in Poland and in Lytton and in Galicia and in Hungary and of course in Russia and Ukraine, etc. Be thankful how many yeshivas we have now, but the Midrashim now come, I'll show you all the Bachim that are sitting and learning. Okay, so there's one boy now, fine. So finally, what say Chalul Basada? What do you want? None of the Torah looks at a Chalul Basada. Chalul Basada, you know, has to come down to make the measurements. The Sanhedrin Hagadol. You don't send the local Orthodox rabbi, the local shop. The Sanhedrin Doyle has to come down and make the measurements. They all sat with measuring tape. Suddenly, they said, why? Because there was one Chalol Basada. And they asked themselves, maybe we did not give him the food he needed. Maybe we did not give him the nurture. Maybe we did not accompany. We did not give him the dignity. We did not give him the Simcha Sachayim. We did not listen to him. We did not appreciate him. We were not there for him. Fact remains. Take New York. New York, three million Jews came here. How many Jewish children are in Jewish day schools in New York? And I'm talking day schools on all levels. From black Sheba black is white Sheba white. But connected to Judaism, I believe the number is between 12 and 15,000. Imagine. With an interim marriage, 70,000. Eretz Yisrael, Palter, and Shalmelech. The situation, as you know, is equally difficult. Came Shuvu and looked at the Acherim and said, Shuvu Bonim Shaivavim, Chutzme Acher. And they allowed the children this time to open up their ears. You see, what we see in them is what they see in themselves. The Yoikner Shalmaila, the Yoikner Shalmata, every person has two images. There's the image of who you were meant to be, who you were supposed to be, who you're called on to be, and there's the image of who you are. By most people, it's a far cry. Suddenly, by Yaakov, suddenly they saw the Yoikin Lamata reflected it, mirrored the Yoikin Lamata. They couldn't believe it. Because what I see in my child is what he or she will see in themselves. I could look at a Yiddishkin and I could say, this is an Acher. And he will see an Acher in himself. And I could look at a Jewish child and say, I see a Ben, and it takes a Yosef, and Yosef is sometimes persecuted by his own brothers. His own brothers say, what are you dealing with people in Mitzrayim? What are you going to these places? Come on, remain within ourselves. Feltice work to do in Flatbush, in Borough Park, in Muncie, in Williamsburg, in Seagate, in Usku, Echdafleufen, to Kfar Saba. I have to build 67 schools for 15,000. And it takes the vision of a Yosef, and it takes the vision of a Jew, to be able to turn and say Shuvu Bonim because you're not an Achir, you're a Ben. There are Jews who are crying, I want meaning in my life. I want direction in my life. There are Jews who are not even crying. It's a Kala Pnima, the Loyishtama. There's a confusion, there's a despair, there's a depression. But there's a Kala Pnima, the Loyishtama. David Malachisor, Chaivikayim says, Lechu, Pishtu Yideichem Bigdud. Don't stop. Go bring back those people, those kids that everybody identifies as Acher, because they're not Acher. They are children. Just don't look at the image below. cooking with See in a child what he really is, what he really can be, what the Rebbeinu Shalom sees in him. And then you can erect a ladder that's Mutzav Arza, for Magia Hashemayim. My friend, somebody told me, a Maisa, a Yid who's a big supporter from the yeshiva, from that particular yeshiva. It happened in the 1930s. There's a yeshiva in B'nai Brak, some of you may know it. It's called Tif Eres Tzien. I think Rosh Hashiva today is a Shlema Kanavsky, the son of Reb Chaim Kanavsky, Shlita. And he related the story to this Yid as a big supporter of the yeshiva. He shared it with me. He said, I heard it from him directly. In the 1930s, you know, the matzah in the yeshiva, especially in Eretz was not what it was today. And often the yeshivas 
where there were bachim that would learn, learn on Shabbos, but they weren't careful in Shabbos. So this, this yeshiva, there was a boy, Shabbos afternoon, he lit a cigarette. Two aiders came to the Rosh Hashiva, they told him the story, the Rosh Hashiva called him the boy, and said you have a few hours to pack your bags and get out of the yeshiva immediately. Who was the founder, the dean of the yeshiva? The Chazaynish. Chazaynish called him the Rosh Hashiva, and said, I heard that you expelled this bacha from yeshiva. He says, yeah. He says, what happened? Tells him the ma'isa, chal of Shabbos b'fahesi, there's no room for him in yeshiva. Chazanish says, wow. I have an observation. What's the observation? The beginning of Sanhedrin, the Mishnah says, the din of the is b'chav gimel. Whenever you want to execute a Jew, you want to exercise capital punishment, you need a bezdin of 23. I just want to know if you convened a bezdin of 23 dayan, and you decided together that this joy, this this boy deserves spiritual capital punishment. Because if this is true, then in the fascist and Elam has a, how much more so did in the fascist and Elam have when you're expelling him from yeshiva? He's not going to the kail across the street to learn, he's going to other places. So it's Mamish and Indian of Din and the Did you convene Chav Gimel to make that decision? Rosh Hashiva said, No, it was my own decision. Because Inish tells him, I respect you very much. But our mission is our mission. Din and the you need 23 people. Not because you're not smart and you're not good and you're not fine, but you need 23 people to make such a decision. He says, Rebbe, these decisions I have to make myself. I'm the Rosh Hashiva of the Yeshiva. Because Inish says, You have to convene 23 people. Convene them, discuss it. If they say yes, if the majority says yes, the majority of two, I understand. We do it. But if not, you can't. Until you don't convene Chav Gimel, you can't make that psaki, you have to bring him back to Yeshiva. So he tells the Chazanish, he says, if you are telling me to do this, then I have to resign. If I don't have this authority in Yeshiva, I can't be here. Chazanish says, here's a chai. The same Gemara in Sanhedrin says that based of Dalit, the name is is b'shloisha or b'yachid momcha. The name is is three yachid momcha. Throwing out this boy from yeshiva is dinin nefashas. You leaving yeshiva is nishke dinin nefashas. It's dinin momenas. For dinin nefashas you need chav gimel. For dinin momenas you need shloisha yachid momcha. Ich bin a yachid momcha. Gei gesundheit. <laughs> he left, he resigned. <clears throat> and for two weeks, the Chazay Nish had to give the Shir himself, could didn't have a Rosh Hashiva. He brought the boy back. The boy knew why he came back, what happened. Well, probably Rosh Hashiva came back after three weeks. I guess it was Mamish Dine moment as he came back after three weeks, so that was solved. And Lopoyal Mamish, this young boy today, is considered a great leader in the literature world in Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because he understood that a Yiddish kind is Dine Nefoshis Mamish. At some point in our history, our matzah split. And the split happens in different situations. It happened in Bayis Yishin, Malchus Beis David, Malchus Yisroi, Rav Benavat Rechava. It happened in Bayis It happened in Golos. It happened again 300 years ago in France, Germany, with the Haskalah. Split, Kal Yisrael was split. Even in the religious Jewish world, I don't have to tell you about the splits. The matzah gets split. The majority of the matzah left the Seder table. The majority of the matzah left the Seder table. The majority of Klai Yisrael and Gashmias, the 16, 17 million Jews, the majority of Klai Yisrael said, we are, our future is not by the Seder table. Our future is not with the mother or the Chayroises or the Eberstaf here. We're not into Kena Sehillim, and we're not into how many Makkas we're Mitzrayim, our Boyim Chamishim, the Belezer, the Bakivin of Yosef Lili. We're not into the Dayenus, and we're not into the egg with salt water, and we're certainly not into the Vegada to the Our future is elsewhere. Most of the matzah is not by the Seder table. A very little part of the matzah is by the Seder table. Comes the Haggadah and tells us, you want to finish your Seder? you got to go and bring back the other part of the matzah. Bring it to the Seder table. And what's the name of that piece of the Haggadah? Tzofun. What's Tzofun? The Ruach Tzofun is Adonai Ramalach. Tzofun is hidden. Why is that for Kadim called Tzofun? Because these Jews are as Jews as anybody else's. It's just tzofen. It's the ruach tzvainus. It's the kinor. It's tzofen. It's, the, it's hidden. It's there. It's just hidden. 
It's tough when it's hidden. You want to finish your Seder, you want to scream, L'shana habob Yerushalayim, Chadgad yechad mi edeyad, God says, fine, but you have to go out and bring back the second part of the matzah, the bigger part, and bring it to the Seder table, and restore its place, and klal Yisrael, and give it back its dignity, as part of the Am Hashem of Bnei Avram, Mitzvah Yaakov, and I, and you cannot finish our Seder, and we cannot say, our L'shana habob Yerushalayim, as long as we're not ready to do that baskel and say shuvu, shuvu bonim shayvavim, because you're not an acher, you're not an acher, you're a ben. And that helps us look in the mirror and look at ourselves and say we're also not acher, we're ben. Chazaynish understood this about one child in the neighborhood who was Mechalel Shabbos. And here we have thousands and thousands of children. One of the directors of Shuvu phoned me yesterday from Eretz Yisrael. So he says he was just at an event, I don't know if you know the story, just at an event of Shuvu in Netanya. And a woman, who's a lawyer in Eretz Yisrael, a secular Jewish woman, a lawyer, Israeli, gets up and says, I have a grandson in Shuvu, and I want to tell you something about the lineage of where this grandson comes from. We're Russian Jews. We're Russian Jews. You know, I... I don't know if you're familiar well with the, 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 the tragic history of Russian Jewry is a history that's not been told. The reason it's not been told is for good reason Hitler, Yamach Shemai, eclipsed the story of Stalin. But you know, Stalin's story is, is as heinous as, as the word evil is not even adequate, as evil as Hitler's story. They were a good match, those two. And the story of Russian Jewry is an untold story of what happened there. I mean, well, the way the communists did it, the way that they, the goodness of evil that they had. So she tells the story. She says, my Zayda, I mean, my father, the boy's elder Zayda, was a communist leader. He was in the Evsektia. The Evsektia, I come from Russia, so I could pronounce these words. The Evsektia was the party, the movement that the communist regime set up of Jews to take care of Jews. To take care of Jews, to uproot Yiddishkeit from the Soviet Union. You remember, the Soviet Union had a great million of Bnei Yisrael at the time, seven million Jews, and they did it almost successfully. They had opposition, minimal opposition. And uh, Stalin murdered 40 million people, a large amount of them were Jews. My Zayda was exiled 25 years in Siberia. So you're dealing with that situation. And he was, she says, my father was from the Evsektia. He was from the communists. They hated every. Mitzutz of Yadus. Every Mitzutz of Yadus, my father. He was called a commissar. And then in 1941 in June, Germany invaded the Soviet Union. And they began invading city after city, town after town. The Ritzichas began en masse in Russia and the Ukraine, especially. More than a million and a half Jews were murdered in that part before gas chambers and they came to the town where my father was the leader of the Evsektia, the Commissar, and they rounded up all the Jews and it was a community, of, of a full community, it was an Erlich and they were still naive, they, the Elam didn't know what the Germans are up to, they couldn't believe it. As you know, many, many stories and accounts and she says, it was almost dark and the Jews were commanded to sit by the Germans. So one of the Jews innocently went over to the SS guard and said, do you mind if we dab in Mincha? <laughs> you know what I mean? Put a line by the food stamps, you know, make a minya for Mincha in, in, in the restaurant, and five flags, whatever it is. So the SS started to bark like they used to bark. By no means you sit down, I'll shoot you right away. She says, my father, Taka the Evsektia, Taka Commissar. But it bothered him how the Jews are being treated and by the arch enemy, the Germans. So he turned to the Jews and he says, Yes, we're going to daven Mincha. And when the guy walked out for a few minutes, he said, Let's stand up and daven Mincha. And he stood up and they stood up after him and they daven Mincha. The German came back and he saw that they're in the middle of a minion. So he stopped the minion. And he asked, who was responsible for this? And he said, me. So he says, so he shot and killed my father on the spot. So my father died 
helping Jews down in their last mincha to God before they were exterminated on Kiddush Hashem. That was how my father ended his life. He said, now, I wondered what a tragic end for my father's life and what a paradox for his whole life. He have sex yet, and he dies organizing a minion for Minach. And I wondered about this, but now I look at my grandson and I understand. I understand that his grandfather took him by his hands and from heaven brought him into Shubu. So he's now Davani Mincha every day. So the mysterious nefesh that my grandfather had for Mincha doesn't end because this kid is Davani Mincha every single day. So my grand my father's Mincha is being perpetuated every single day through this child's life. So at the end, the Germans are gone, but my father's Mincha lives on in the life of my grandson, who is in Shuvu Davani Mincha every day. This she just shared a little while ago at a Shuvu event at Natanya. This is the embodiment of what is going on in this revolution. What a blessed revolution that Rav Pan created, that we can only humbly say, Allah mud hashachar. You have brought the dawn for so many Yiddish kinderlach, but Amcha Yisrael Tzrichim Parnosa. Amcha Yisrael Tzrichim Parnosa. So it's, I think, our great privilege to be able to extend our hearts and our hands to ensure that the revolution of Shuvu, to be the baskel of our generation screaming Shuvu Bonim Shevonim Chutz Meyacher, continues to grow and accelerate deeper and deeper, stronger and stronger, until the ultimate mission is fulfilled of the Chol Banayich Limudei Hashem to reveal that every Jewish child is really Limudei Hashem. Is a Talmud of the Rebbein Shalom. Thank you very much. The story that you, that you said about the Chazonish was, was so powerful. Any kid that would be watching this that feels left behind, um, what message would you, would you like to give these kids? You have to know the first thing, how valuable you are, how beautiful you are, how holy you are, how precious you are, how much Hashem loves you and cherishes you. You have to find your place. Don't be afraid to go by your own beat and your own rhyme and find your own place. But the worst mistake is when you forget that you're a prince, and you forget that you're a ben yachid of Hashem, and you forget that you have an indispensable role to play in our history, in our past, present, and future.